Lights coming back, everybody. Welcome, <gasps> yeah. Welcome to Caravan of Garbage. Be scared if you're a vampire. That's right. Uh, if... But if you aren't a vampire, maybe also be scared because there's a lot of stray bullets flying around. Sometimes he'll be holding you in a hospital and then cops just open fire. Yeah, and maybe he'll spin around and, like, cop the bullets on his back and, and protect you, but maybe he won't. Maybe he won't. You know, he's getting yeah. old, this guy. <laughs> he doesn't live as long as vampires, if you recall. He has all their strengths and none of their weaknesses except for the weaknesses that he needs, like, a lot of blood or a serum all the time to survive. <laughs> Yep. And if people could leave a like on this video, that would help greatly. It always helps, doesn't it, Mason? Yep. Algorithmically. Oh. Mm. Anyway, Blade 1998. This movie, it kicked off a lot. It yeah. kind of doesn't get the credit it necessarily deserves because it's pre-X-Men, like pre-Spider-Man. It's pre-The Matrix. And there is some stuff from this that kind of like, well, that's very Matrix-esque, isn't it? Certainly. Trench coats. That's right. But it's also post-Crow. So, oh, of course. It's right in that mate. sweet spot, isn't it? It really it was a, is. It was a post-Crow universe. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. Yeah, yeah. But it was also an era where it was the same year as Batman and Robin. So everyone was like, these are over. We're not doing oh, these comic That's absolutely movies. true. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this sort of this sort of reinvigorated the genre. Mm. This was this was also in the in the era where when Marvel were in some serious financial trouble, as they often were throughout yes. the nineties. And if I remember correctly, this is one of the properties that they sold for like a pittance. Yeah, right. I, and I don't have the exact figure, but I think it was like seventy five thousand dollars. Like they they sold the property to New Line Cinema, and who then made one hundred and thirty million dollars. Yeah, New Line apparently originally wanted to do it as an action comedy, but. They David S. Goya, who's gone on to do Batman v Superman, and things are very in quality. Uh -huh. There's good and ill, but he was like, no, let's do this, like, gritty and real. But this isn't actually gritty and real. But this isn't actually... <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> I think this is dated, but it's the best kind of dated. I mean, a blood rave. That's what vampires <laughs> would do in the 90s. In the 90s, they? exactly, that's right. So this particular version of Blade, the vampire elements of him and the fact that his mother was bitten by a vampire and then he's born and he's got half the powers and all that, mm. that's not the Blade from the comics, is it? A lot of that is invented for this. Is yeah, that right? I mean, the original comic book Blade... A, British, mm, I won't yes. hear of it. Uh, and yeah, secondly, his powers were much more limited in the comic books. He was a more or less a regular human vampire hunter, except he couldn't be turned into a vampire. Yeah. That, that, was, that was his number one So say strength. a man with a metal collar is the equivalent. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Uh, when this movie became popular, when the Blade trilogy became popular, yeah. they did what often they do with the comic book characters, they make it more like the movie version. So in the comics, he was then bitten, I think, by Morbius, the living vampire, right, yeah. and he basically we'll get back to him, mutated yeah. and, and gained all the powers that he has in the movies. I love the martial arts in this. It's pretty decent for the time, especially in a pre-Matrix world, yep. post The Crow, obviously. Yep. And it, they, they, they recycled those same four like punch sound effects. Yeah, boy, do they did it, they did it, they gave it enough variation, you barely even notice. You don't even you notice. You notice every time. You can't help but notice. You can't help but notice, it's, uh, it's uh, inescapable. The effects are a mixed bag, but for the time, mostly pretty good. Like the ash effect when he kills a vampire and they go down to their skeleton. I think if it was faster, it would look better. Because right. often you'll just see the CGI skeleton for a <laughs> second before it disappears. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But everything about the character in terms of... Like the costume, I love the symmetry, even the sword is like directly in the middle of his back. Uh -huh. Like the haircut and the tattoos, the jacket. I love his array of weapons, some you only see like once. Like the sword's great with the little trick blade in it. Mm -hmm. the, the gun the for gun, shooting? The gun for shooting is good also, mm -hmm. but he only uses this weapon once. The garrot is incredible. Oh yeah, he right. He garrots Mr. Pigtails uh -huh. at the head <laughs> and takes his head off. Yeah, right. That's an incredible weapon. Uh, before Wesley Snipes though, they actually considered Denzel Washington, LL Cool J, and Lawrence Fishburne but Wesley Snipes became involved because he was going to do Black Panther for Marvel and that was kind of was taking its time and it wasn't really didn't look like it was going to happen and then so huh. he, ended up, he ended up being Blade instead of Black Panther yeah good move what do you think of Karen Jensen Who's that? Ah, uh, the love interest. She's fine. Yeah, she's fine. There was a scene with her that, that was cut because it was too disturbing. She goes to Blade and Whistler's hideout. And she's like, sweet uh -huh. warehouse. And they're like, we know. It's the 90s. We know. We, we know. It's a, it's, a, it's a sweet warehouse that's very easily accessible by just... It's just next to a train station. <laughs> there are literally trains going past it. There's no doors. You could just walk in. But she finds a vampire baby in this deleted scene that they're just testing all their different weapons and experiments on. Oh, wow. See what what kills uh -huh. vampires. And what would also probably kill regular babies. Yeah, as well. sure, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You think this silver bullet will kill 
<laughs> this vampire baby, bang! Uh, Donald Logue's in this, uh, Mr. Pigtails. Yes, as Quinn, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. His role was extended because he was very funny on set, and so he huh. kind of he, he gets a, a fair bit to do before he's garroted <laughs> to pieces at the end. But I saw this bit of trivia, and I thought it was pretty amusing. So in the hospital scene, you know where Donald Logue is in the complete... <laughs> Burn victim makeup, like yeah, head but, to toe, and then later he uh, he regenerates his entire body, including yes. his hair and his beard. That's right. <laughs> well, it's like the Wolverine, isn't it? Yeah, it is. He's yeah. growing his hair back instantly. Mm -hmm. But in that fight scene, he got his jaw massively dislocated. Oh, for real? For real. So they had to take him to a real hospital, <laughs> and the hospital were like, "What happened to this man? Because <laughs> right. he's just covered still, head uh -huh. to toe, in the burns." Oh uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> also, why didn't Blade kill that guy? He just lights him on fire and just backs away. You know he's going to jump up in the morgue. I got the impression that he wanted to send a message to uh, the, the bad guys. But really, he's making more vampires doing that, isn't he? He made, a, he made two. I mean, one got unvampired. That's true, yeah. Because he happened to be an unvampirologist. Yes, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. That just happened to be a degree, yeah. yeah. Uh, I love the bit, though, where Whistler's filling up the car. Uh -huh. And he's just splashing petrol all over the car. <laughs> and and then he a lights a cigarette. Mm -hmm. That guy, if if the vampires didn't get him, yeah. he was got to explode yeah. himself regardless. Well, he's so. got that. He's got a big leg brace down one leg, and yeah. I guess we're, we're 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 to assume that he got that in battle with vampires. But he probably just got a corner revolving door or something. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And then alternate ending in how for jumping ahead, but Blade goes to Russia at the end. Uh -huh, and yeah. That vampire that he sees was going to be Whistler. So that was one. At one point, oh, that was going to be that situation. So, yeah. But they saved him for Blade 2, Blade On, bro. Is that what it's called? Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah. Okay, good. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the villain in this, Deacon Frost. Well, there's two villains. There's, of course, the great Udo Kier, who's been in one million films. The oh, traditional vampires. I love the, I love the board of weird Eastern European vampires. Me too, yeah. I'm there for it mm. every goddamn day of the mm. week. But, but then I, we've got a fresh new face, yeah. Stephen Dorff as, as Deacon Frost. I forgotten kind of his role in this. Like, I knew he was in it, but he's really good in this movie. I agree. Yeah, with the sword. Exactly. Yeah, you throw in the air, catch it underneath. Yeah, shut the fuck up! But yeah, the Deacon Frost role was... They went to Jet Li and they ended up getting this guy, which I think works. The hair, the cigarette behind the ear. <laughs> yes. That's very 90s. Ah, oh, the leather blazers. <laughs> you know it. Mm, so yeah. good. How's this, though? Yes. This movie has some terrific lines. I wrote down my three standout ones. I have. I already know what number one is, but yes. give us the other two. Okay, so the number one is obviously... Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up here. Is that an ice expression? No, it was apparently it was something he said in I relation was... to that character offset. And people are like, that's cool and makes sense. It does not. It doesn't, though, does it? I think it's also probably something that maybe a member of his entourage said and he stole it. So that guy's just still seething. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. He ratted him out for tax evasion. That's right. Yeah. The other one is when the police shoot Blade in the hospital. What the fuck are you out of your damn mind? And the other one is where Whistler hands him the torch, the UV torch. Uh -huh. And he's like, still it's still heavy. heavy. And he's like, you're so big. So yeah. <laughs> It's great stuff. It is a good. It's a good. It's it's held up for the most part. It is held up. The blood effects certainly haven't held up. Uh, a lot of the CGI hasn't held up. I know we mentioned it earlier. Yeah. Most most of that finale where we've got vampire demon skeletons coming out of people's bodies, oh atrocious. Goodness. When Deacon Frost turns into that blood god and his hand sort of bub regre yeah. regenerates into. He's cut in half and then he yeah. switches back together. That's an alternate ending though, because they reshot it. I don't Let's know see. if you've seen it. But the actual ending they shot is he just turns into a big blood tornado. Okay. And Deacon <laughs> Frost kind of, he you know, whips Blade around the room and Blade's like, I can't even deal with this blood tornado. And then at one point, it's still rough, but Deacon Frost's like head and shoulders come out of the top and he's like, hey, Blade, it's me. You mean the, the anti-dandruff shampoo? That's what I mean, yeah. Yep. So he's got great night his head, hasn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah. Upon test screening that, people were like, there's a big disconnect between this character that we enjoyed and then he's just a big swirling blood tornado. Yeah, how about we have them fight Kung Fu style? Yeah. But a lot of that Kung Fu style bit at the end is just, it seems to be them just clacking swords yes. diagonally. Have you but noticed I, yeah, that? Well, I, I agree, but at the same time, I think... <laughs> Because that was the limitations of the genre again uh, at the time. Because that, again, that was pre the Matrix. Sure. That it was just the a lot. Post the crow. Post the crow. Exactly. Yeah. So it was just a lot of swords clacking. I think the editing yes. seals that as best they can yeah. at the time. Like it looks dangerous. Again, even though it's just okay, clack them together for five minutes and we'll just put something <laughs> put something together that works. Did you enjoy the the spin kicks hitting nobody? Yes. Oh, the two the other. Okay. And here we have the clip. 
a blade and a henchman spin kicking the air. You could loop that endlessly. Yes, that's right. <laughs> but I think that there are some special effects that are good. The bit where they put that uh, European vampire in the sun mm -hmm. and he kind of sizzles away and it's kind of Raiders of the Lost Ark-esque where yes. his body's just kind of tearing apart from, uh -huh. the, from the sunlight. I like the, uh, the, the serum that bubbled up the, the vampire. Actually, yeah, you're I right. I think that's a good effect. That feels practical, some of those bubbly yeah. people. I wonder whether they made them practically yeah. and then kind of imposed them into the shot. Yeah, or just put them in a decompression chamber. Yeah, that might have been it as well. Uh, and there's also the puppetry of that giant slovenly vampire. That, I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a practical effect, but, you know, there's... That Good was choice a... of words, slovenly. This is slovenly vampire. It's very slovenly. <laughs> Apparently, the story behind that guy is he's just eaten babies. So he's just got to that point where it's beyond what, blood. What is this, what, what is this original script? There's a lot of <laughs> babies being eaten and shot with silver bullets. What's happening? You know what surprised me? There's a scene that showed a lot of restraint. It's after Whistler dies and Blade is suiting up and uh -huh. he's clicking in his silver bullets. And it's just mostly silent with some kind of low hum, ominous music. But I feel like... You could have easily have just had that go. But it's not. And I mean, it, it becomes that. Oh, sure. When, yeah. he, when he gets to the to the lobby, uh -huh. like the Matrix, or maybe even the bit where he dodges the bullets. Like, like the, the Matrix. Matrix. I enjoyed the bit where Blade tears out a vampire's throat and throws it at another guy. <laughs> it's pretty good, yeah. That's a good that's a good scene, sure. I loved the I loved it when the vampires could uh, survive in daylight just by putting on a lot of sunscreen. You'd really want to zinc that scalp, oh, you know yeah, what I mean? Get that, you it get, get that right in there, the, you know? yeah. Or a lot of gel. Fudge? Was oh, that the 90s? They probably put some fudge in, yeah. <laughs> SPF 30 fudge. I liked that uh, sunscreen element. Because you'd give that a go, wouldn't you'd you? You'd give it a go. I mean, it'd probably still get your eyes, but mm -hmm. you make it work, don't you? Yeah. There was actually a Stan Lee cameo that was cut in this. You know, the cops that run in to find yeah. some pigtails on fire mm -hmm. on the wall. Yeah. One of them was supposed to be Stan Lee, but they just went, nobody... No Stan Lee. <laughs> nobody can imagine Stan Lee. Even if you knew him, nobody can imagine Stan Lee running into any any location. So. This isn't mall rats. Exactly. That's right. This is post mall rats. This is serious business. <laughs> this is post mall rats days. Yeah. I think it wraps up well and it sets up a sequel that they probably were very unsure that they were going to have without leaning too heavily into it. There is an alternate ending and you can find this where Blade goes outside. And he's, and he's with his lady friend, whose name I've already forgotten, mm -hmm. the scientist who cures being a vampire. You'd think the vampires would at least look into that, wouldn't you? I mean, I know they probably don't want to be cured, uh -huh. but it's kind of, it's knowledge you'd want. Say you've got an enemy that you, you could turn to a human and then you could use them as a blood bag or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Or if you want to go on like a seaside holiday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you don't want to, you don't want to fudge your You don't your want to zinc up. Yeah. yeah. You, then, you, then you could just become a human for a bit. <laughs> Go on, have a lovely holiday, then just get bitten by a vampire again, turn into a vampire. Come back, be vampire. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can appreciate that. They kind of really speed over that vampire cure. The curing a vampire is impossible. I did it in like six hours. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, yeah. that's pretty good. Can you make me a new serum? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I probably can. But no, there is an ending where Blade goes outside and it's like, there's more danger and there's more things to do. And the lady, whose name I've forgotten, mm -hmm. is like, what about that guy? And you look in the distance and there's a man in a trench coat with long hair standing on a building and Blade's like, he gets ready for action. That's supposed to be Michael Morbius, oh. which they're making a solo film of with Jared Leto, Leto, mm. at this very moment. The Leto himself. Right. But they realised that uh, they don't own the rights to that character because Spider-Man was at Sony and yeah, still right. is, so mm. they couldn't just put in Michael Morbius. But also, they could have just put him in and be like, who's that? <laughs> some, some other guy. Just some guy. Because yeah. they don't say, that's Michael Morbius. You know, from the comic books, <laughs> none of you are reading. That's why Marvel's going out of business. There's also a deleted scene where Deacon Frost uh, opens the freezer in his apartment. Just... And there's dead babies? No, you're close. Oh, what a twist. Do you know who his idea is? He's going to release the blood tornado and infect everybody in the world and turn mm -hmm. them into a vampire. That and... was also an alternate ending. Yeah, right. Where then it would end with Blade and his lady friend traveling the world fighting vampires. Huh. But then if you turn every, everyone into a vampire... Well, how do you feed? How do you feed? Mm -hmm. So he's just got people hanging in giant plastic bags in his freezer and he's like, yeah, I just keep people in here and I just drink their blood. Like, this is a test, but we're going to do this the world over. It's going to be great. People are going to love it. So that was the idea. That's if you were thinking this plan makes no sense. Mm, I was, and continue to do so, <laughs> yes. i got a last little fact here. He didn't do either of the sequels, uh -huh. but the last film he did direct, and this makes a lot of sense, is League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh, yep, okay. Do you understand yep. now? Yep, St <laughs> Stephen Norrington's League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yeah, I get it now. That's interesting because, again, Blade, mm. having rewatched it in the year of our law, 2019, mm. still a pretty solid film. Yeah. I'm willing to bet that if we rewatched League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, it would not hold up at this point. I 100% so, agree. So how, how did a man fall so far? Yeah. Is the good is a question, right? Hubris, thy name be Stephen, Stephen Norrington, Norrington, I guess. Yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. What I did like in the credits, we had... 
Blade created by Marv Wolfman and Gene Colan. I'm like, that's a nice little touch because that often didn't happen. Yeah. I just looked into it. Apparently, that's because Marv Wolfman sued New Line for $35 million. <laughs> and then rather than giving him the money, they're like, uh, let's give you a created by credit. Brilliant. Mm. And didn't he not get it on the second one either or something? Uh, that is correct, yes. Great. Mm-hmm. Good or work, the TV everybody. show, yeah. Or well, the TV show. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so we're getting the new Blade. You excited for it? So excited. Yeah. Because, it, 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 I mean... First of all, reintroduction of Blade, yeah. but also introduction of vampires into the larger Marvel Universe. That's what it. kind of vampires are they going to be? They're going to be this kind of vampire? They're going to be a weird magic vampire that turns into a bat and a wolf and, and, and whatever, got hypnosis powers. You want Stephen Dorff, 90s vampire, you want him back? Yes. Sunscreen him up, gel in the hair, well, in the hair. I feel like that's the essence of a vampire. You know how they say like certain men, like their fashion stops in the best year of their life? And if you're a vampire bitten in the 90s... Leather blazer fudge in the hair. Oh my hair. goodness. Yeah, that's right, yeah. People thought uh, maybe Wesley Snipes wouldn't be happy with this situation because he's talked about wanting to return to the character of Blade, but he recently put up a social media post where he's like, it's a new era, man. Good on him. Yeah, that's Let true. him get out there. So there you go. He's got the blessing of Blade himself. Do you think he's going to get a cameo in the movie? That's a good maybe question. a wi- maybe could be could be the Whistler could be a Whistler, character. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah maybe. But that'd be an Abigail Whistler. Oh, from Blade 3. daughter of famous anti vaxxer Abigail Whistler. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's save that for Blade 3. <laughs> All right, this has been Carabout of Garbage. Uh, we do this every Tuesday. You got something you want us to look at? We'll bloody look at it. Comic, movie, video game, Blade sequel. If it's Blade 2 or 3, don't even bother because we'll get to it. <laughs> don't even worry. Don't, don't waste your time and hours. We're going to get to them, all right? Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up here. I would love, though, to hear people's thoughts on this movie. How do you think it holds up? It's yeah. one of those things where, like I said, yeah, it's dated, but it's not bad. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm, so there's, there's way there's way more good than bad in this movie. Yeah, so. I don't disagree. And of course, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. We do that every Monday morning. You want another bloody movie news of the week? We we cover most of it, probably. Some of it. We're across it. <laughs> Some of it. <laughs> I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Thanks for stopping on by. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Yeah.